Hello, this is a Q&A test for the 200 class. Plaintiff attorney is Mr. Mears, M-E-A-R-S. Defense is Mr. Frey, F-R-A-Y. Again, plaintiff Mr. Mears, M-E-A-R-S. Defense is Mr. Frey, F-R-A-Y. And it's going to start with plaintiff attorney. Ready? When was the test? Oh, the right when I got hurt, right? A couple weeks before that, the list opened. Did you sit for the test? Yes, I did. Do you know where you ranked on the test? Yes, I have a ballpark range. Where did you rank? I scored an 85. Is that considered in the first three groups? That is correct, yes. And did you have any, did you have an interview? No, I didn't. Are interviews generally conducted after you take the exam? Correct, yes. Well, of course they are, but there's a certain period of time that they set the interview dates up. Were you injured before you could get your interview date? Yes, correct, it happened before the interview. So were you able to go for the interview? No, I wasn't able to go. Okay, and this is because or due to? It's the same thing with Amanda. Okay, earlier you reported that your pain level in your lower back was a 10, and then you said a nine. You said your hip was an eight. You said your knee was a seven or an eight. You said your right ankle was an eight or nine. Now, I have observed you walking, Ms. Rodriguez, and to my lay eyes, my non-medical eyes, the way you walk does not appear to corroborate the levels of pain that you gave me. Were you telling me the levels of pain that you have if you're not on your medications or the level of pain you have when you are on your medications. And let me stop you for a second. Let me elaborate. When we say a level of pain that's at a nine or a 10, that's a level of pain that's so severe that we really can't concentrate on anything else. We want to get to a doctor and emergency room. We might even say that we can't walk, okay? As I explained in this deposition, before I ever let anybody answer that question, I lay the groundwork, a foundation for how to answer that question. And if you don't mind, you can incorporate this in yours in the future. Now pay attention when you're asked to rate your pain from zero, not one or two, zero, no pain to 10, the most excruciating pain known to mankind. Examples are a heart attack, a kidney, st kidney stone, a gallbladder attack, and from what I've been told, childbirth without anesthesia. These are true tens. Okay, that makes sense now. Thank you. If you claim your pain level is above an eight, eight and a half, nine, ten, you better be in an emergency room or an urgent care with a morphine drip or a Demerol tube going into your arm. That's the kind of pain that's worthy of an eight and a half to a ten. Generally, eight is the limit of tolerance in your home where you can get just you can bury your head in the pillow and take your Norco or whatever, but past that, you're going to be screaming for an injection. Now, do you want to revise some of the numbers you gave him? Yes, I probably need to do that. Okay, I'm done for now. Now you can ask your questions. Thank you for that, Mark. So with your counsel said as an example of extreme pain, what would the pain you're feeling in your, light, your right ankle be right now? Probably an eight. It would be a seven or an eight. Do you mean sitting here today? As you're sitting here at the table knowing that, you know, you took your medication this morning, etc., what would your pain level be? Right now, my for my ankle, about an eight, eight and a half, I'm in terrible pain with my ankle. So after we leave here, according to what your attorney said, are you going to go to a doctor emergency room or get a Demerol drip or something like that? No, because I have. And all it does is, I had this conversation before, my foot right now feels like it's on fire, okay? My back is semi-stable right now, so you can call that an eight. But once my medication wears off, yes, it will be at a 10. I would love to go to the ER, but I'm not going to sit there full of morphine and the next day feel like I'm a drug addict because I'm sweating and going through the withdrawals because of the morphine. I've done it. That's how much pain I'm in all the time. I'm not going to the ER all the time. I don't care what I have to do. I take Epsom salt and fill my tub with hot water and have my fiance put me in there. That's how I have to do it. Every time I'm in pain and go to the ER, all they do is shoot you up with more morphine and you sit there like a heroin addict suffering because, 
okay, take a breath. How many times in the past 12 months have you gone to the ER and been shot up with morphine? I've gone one time. How recently was this? Was this that you went to the, the ER? The last time was in December. And before that, how? When did you, have you gone to the ER due to pain? I wouldn't. I don't know. I don't know. I think just the one time. So you've only been there one time? Yes, I know what the ER does. In every instance, you said you've only been there one time. So how do you know? Yeah, yes, I've heard from other people. Okay. Okay, so you've revised your ankle pain from an 8 or 9 to an 8 and your back pain to an 8. Your hip, you stated earlier, was at a level 8 right now or this morning. Would you state that it's still at a level 8 pain or is it different? It's different. Without medication, it's right now it's about a 7. And what about your right knee? How is that? My right knee is at a 6 or a 7. Okay. Hold on. When you went to bed last night and you lied down in bed, think back. Were you at your lowest pain levels for the day? No, I was in terrible pain. How would you have rated your pain at that time? Are you talking about last night? Watching television or just relaxing without a depot hanging over your head? What would you have said your pain level was in your foot? Probably a 9. Really, it was that bad? It is constantly bad. I'm, yes. What is the lowest your pain ever goes down to in your foot or your ankle? It's probably a seven. It always hurts. Okay, all right. It's a constant, constant pain. It never goes away. All right, so you get really no relief. It's always hurting you. I get no relief at all. Okay, thank you. Okay, you mentioned you've been living with Tony for about a year. Correct, it's been about a year. Do you have any intimate sexual relations with Tony? Periodically, once in a while. How often is periodically? Well, probably once or twice a month. And are you able to enjoy those experiences? No, I'm in too much pain. Okay, I see. That makes sense. Are you using the right words? Are you going to ask the $24 question? Which is what? Do you have sex or do you have sexual intimacy with your boyfriend? Yes or no? It's nobody's business. Again, he needs to know, okay? I know. Okay, no. Okay. Is it because of your injury? Yes, it is. Were you able to have sex prior to your injury? Yes. And were you, prior to the year you lived with Tony, were you seeing Tony and not living with him? Or were you seeing anybody else? No, I was living alone. Okay, and were you in a relationship with Tony even though you were living alone? In a relationship as to how? Boyfriend, girlfriend relationship. Intimate relationship. Mark is a choir boy. He doesn't, he's not as ruthless as I am. I've had to ask that question too many times. I know, he says the S word. It's awkward when you have to ask that question. He had to practice that. What he really should be asking you is, prior to your work injury, did you have any sexual relationship problems with Tony? Were there any issues at all? There were never any problems. Thank you. You've got to ask those questions, Mark. Get used to it. How often did you have sexual relations before your injury in January of 2011? I don't remember. I don't know. Neither do I. Don't look at me. Okay. How about you? Any issues? I'm not the one getting deposed today. She is. But would you remember if you had to? I'm just trying to lighten things up here. I think she... I think we should move on. I should have brought a fan with me today. Does anyone have a fan? I'll tell you, we will move on. That's a good idea, Mark. She probably wants to get this over with soon. Are you wearing a leg brace as a result of this injury? Yes, I am. I always have it on except when I am sleeping or taking a shower. And does the leg brace help you in your mobility? Yes, it does. It helps to keep the knee in one place. Does it help reduce the pain? Yes, when I don't wear it, the pain is terrible and I can't walk without it. Do you wear it all day, 24-7 or... I wear it all the time. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I thought you were done. Or do you wear it just part of the day? Is this something that you put on when you get dressed in the morning? Or do you only wear it when you are walking around? Well, I wear it most of the day. Yes, it helps a lot. Do you sleep with it on at night as well? No, I used to, but not now. I couldn't turn if I needed to. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, I have no further questions. Thank you very much for your time. I will let you know if we need anything else. Neither do I. I don't have any further questions. I will give the stipulation. We move to relieve the court reporter of her duties under the Code of Civil Procedure 2025. 
that the original of today's deposition transcript will be mailed directly to the deponent at her stated home address at 2550 San Timothy Avenue in Dexler, Texas 60035 that she have 30 days to read, review, and sign the deposition under penalty of perjury. If she has any changes or corrections to the deposition transcript, need to be made on a separate sheet provided by the court reporter. This will also be signed under penalty of perjury. The court reporter will also provide her with a mailing envelope with postage to my office in Orlando. And upon receipt within the 10 days, we will forward to defense counsel a copy of the signature page, cover sheet page, and the change or correction sheet page of the deposition transcript. The applicant's attorney is a paperless office. We forego the certified paper copy you normally provide. We prefer an electronic copy in PDF format. You can email that to me at paul, P-A-U-L, at thelaw.com if the original transcript is lost, stolen, misplaced, destroyed, or otherwise unavailable at the time of trial or any subsequent legal proceeding for which it may be required, an unsigned certified copy may be used with the same force and effect as the signed original, so stipulated. Okay, we do have a word list. We've got Amanda, capital A-M-A-N-D-A, -A -A. Mark, capital M-A-R-K, Ms. Rodriguez, M-S period, Rodriguez, capital R-O-D-R-I-G-U-E-Z, Demerol, capital D-E-M-E-R-O-L, Orlando, capital O-R-L-A-N-D-O. -O. San Timothy Avenue, capital S-A-N space, capital T-I-M-O-T-H-Y space, capital A on Avenue. And Dexler, Texas, capital D-E-X-L-E-R, Texas, capital T-E-X-A-S. And that is it for the word list. Good luck.